Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or orphan. If you do afflict them, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be with him as a creditor, and you shall not exact interest from him. If ever you take your neighbor's garment in pledge, you shall restore it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering. It is his mantle for his body. In what else shall he sleep? And if he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love of you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. I, I love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. My God, my rock, where I take refuge. My shield, my saving strength, my stronghold. I cry out, praised be the Lord, and I see I am saved from my foes. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I, I love, love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You know what kind of people we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction, with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, for not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your Father in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us what a welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who delivers us from wrath to come. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If you love me, you will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love you, and we will come to you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they came together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once upon a time, I studied engineering at Wits University. In most of my courses, the concepts could become really complex and confusing. But I often found that if I could find some central defining idea that brought all of these concepts together, then it was much easier to understand and work with them. I only had to memorize the central idea and I could work out the rest from there. In today's gospel, Jesus is giving us one of these central ideas. Love God and, like this, love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else can be worked out from this. In her book, All About Love, Bell Hooks uses the definition given by M. Scott Peck in The Road Less Traveled, which is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. By spiritual growth, they mean the holistic growth of a person, including the physical, mental, psychological, emotional, and creative dimensions of the self. In our Christian understanding, love can be thought of as the gift of oneself to others. This is the nature of God's love. He shares himself with us. He is being and he gives us being. He is love and he gives us love. But I wonder, Jesus says that we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But are we able to love ourselves? When you fly during the safety announcements, they always remind you that in the case of a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will fall from the ceiling. Make sure to put your own mask on first and then assist others. You cannot help others if you have collapsed from asphyxiation. We sometimes misunderstand love and think that it means self-depreciation. It does not. I think that this flows from a misunderstanding of the meaning of the cross. This is perhaps understandable. What do we see there? The Son of God hanging on a plank of wood, suffering and dying. But the cross is not an act of self-depreciation. Jesus is not denigrating himself. He does not despise himself. Rather, it is because Jesus knows and values who he is that he is able to give of himself so totally, no matter the cost. The cross tells us that Jesus loves us with his entire being. In fact, Jesus' whole life on earth tells us the same thing. The Old Testament, too, speaks of God's love for his people and his creation. 
What would happen if we were to fully realize and internalize this love? How would I live if I recognized in each and every moment that I am a person so completely loved? Firstly, I think we would feel a desire to respond to God's love for me by loving God. I want to give myself to Him with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind. I love the one who loves me and who gives himself so totally for me. Because of this love, I begin to have a deeper sense of respect and self-esteem for myself. I realize that I have a responsibility to care for myself and to make decisions for my own holistic growth. And flowing from this love between me and God, I begin to grow in love for the rest of God's creation. I'm able to recognize that other people are just as loved by God and that they are my brothers and sisters. This is why Jesus' second commandment is like his first. To love my neighbor is to love God. This love also becomes a societal love. How I treat foreigners and refugees, widows and orphans, the poor, must be defined by this love. In the first reading from Exodus, God tells his people that if he hears their cry, his anger will flare up. He is a passionate, compassionate God. Last night, I heard a story of a lady, a foreign national, who is dying of breast cancer. The cancer has advanced beyond a level where it can be stopped. She can now only receive palliative care. But the cancer was found long ago when it was still treatable. But the government healthcare facility where she went to ask for treatment asked her to pay an exorbitant figure for her to receive treatment. As a waitress, dependent upon meager gratuities, she could not raise the figure. She is now on her deathbed. How do you think the Lord feels seeing his daughter suffer and die in this way? Surely he weeps with her and her family. I ask you, where is the love in our society? How can we allow this to happen? This love also extends to our common home. We are part of God's creation and dependent upon it. We have the ability to cause great damage to these systems that keep us alive and well. And this damage affects the poor most severely. Our awareness of God's love impels us to take responsibility to care for our common home. So, if, you are, if your Christian life is becoming confusing, if you don't know what to do, if you don't know what to make of all the different voices pulling you this way and that, just remember Jesus' central idea. Love God, and like this, love your neighbor. You can figure out the rest from there. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered 
to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for Encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week. Thank you.